Good morning, First UMC. Welcome to worship this morning. So glad to see everyone. Welcome guests and just make yourself comfortable today. Um, Jesus is going to take care of us this morning. I'm so glad everyone is with us. Um, today we're going to learn how Jesus feeds our, our souls, not just our bellies, but our souls as well. Um, quick announcement. There has been some work done in the rainbow room and Bruce will need some help downstairs following uh, service. I know Carrie has volunteered to help. So if there's any other gentlemen or women, I'm not going to uh, point you out that you cannot lift. But um, there's some plywood that needs to be removed and so we appreciate any help you can give right after service. So thank you for that. Um, I invite you now to get your hearts ready to celebrate Jesus and celebrate one another, being in each other's presence again. Um, we've got Hans and Kathy back from their fabulous trip, and um, I'm sure they've got plenty of stories to share um, with us. So let's offer each other a sign of God's love and God's peace smiling and just giving it away, just giving that love away this morning. And now I invite you to take a deep breath in and a sweet exhale out. Make sure you're in a comfortable position, feet flat on the earth, and let God's energy force up through your feet, your calves, your thighs, all the way up to the tip of your head and just breathe in the goodness of the Holy Spirit. You saw a face when you were offering each other a sign of God's love and peace. I want you to pray for that face right now, for that person, for their week ahead. May it be filled with the glories only God can fill. Pray that they will be fed both physically and spiritually. We thank you, God, for allowing us this time to just be present. Amen. And now we will hear a song by Corinne May, Five Loaves and Two Fishes. Good morning. Would you please join me in the call to worship? It's in your bulletin. Welcome to worship this day. Yes, thank you for standing. Thank you. We're glad to be here. Right here. Some have come seeking, some have come struggling. Lord, Lord be with, with each, each one, one of us today. today. Feed, Feed our hearts and souls with, with your, your transforming, transforming love. love. God is truly with you all today, guiding, lifting, feeding, restoring your souls. Praise, Praise be to God, God who continually, continually abides with, with us. us. Amen. Amen. Please join me with the opening prayer. Lord, Lord we, we come, come to the grassy knoll on the hillside, waiting in expectation of your word for us today. Our minds and hearts grumble in anticipation. We wait, we listen, we hear. And, and we, we don't, don't want, want to leave until we have heard everything you have to say. Not only have we heard, but we have witnessed your miracle. Thank you for calling us to you today and every day. Amen. Please join me in singing Come Away With Me. You'll find it in the small black hymnal or on the screen. And it's page 2202 for those who use the book. To pray, reflect, to 
God's grace, come away with me, come away. Pray with me on a gentle sea, on top of a hill in Galilee. In gardens like a Gethsemane, come away with me, come away. ways that God has love blesses all our days and join with me in silent praise come away with me come away and say in words whisper from your soul the feelings and actions you can't control Spirit needs to be made whole. Come away with me. Come away. Come away with me to a quiet place. To God's loving arms, pray to embrace all those who come in hope of grace. Come away. Please be seated. I'm going to invite you now to do a congregational anthem together. Women and men alternating verses, and it will say um, who is singing when. It's 348 in your United Methodist hymnal or up on the screen. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Women. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you. Promised, 
promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, you who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Wonderfully done. And now Carol will bring us the word this morning. We'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, 13 through 21, feeding the 5,000. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were more, about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy God, we thank you for the word that you have brought to our hearts this day, that we might have food for our bellies and food for our souls. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts here be acceptable to you, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The question for myself, and maybe some of you, is do we leave this passage undisturbed and let the simplicity of our faith rest in the fact that this was a miracle by Jesus? He fed thousands with only a few fish and a few loaves of bread, showing us that he was who he said he was, Lord and Savior. Or is there more to this story? I think we can all agree in the simple fact that it was a miraculous event, but I think there's more. Isn't there always more with Jesus? I found it very fitting. I was away this past week at a manna flourishing program right outside of Boston, knowing today's scripture was about loaves of bread. Now, we remember manna, right? But in this case, manna did not fall out of the sky for the complaining Israelites to eat, but five loaves of bread and just two fish were available for food for the day that Jesus was on the hillside with his disciples and the thousands of people who came to hear him and be uh, healed by him. And so we question, how is it possible he could have fed so many people with just those few pieces of food? Let's take a look at the action of this scripture. Jesus goes off in prayer and solitude after losing his dear friend and cousin, John the Baptist, to Herod's horrible and hideous act of um, slaying him and presenting his head on a platter 
to Salome, the dancer. Jesus is alone. He needs to be in prayer and quiet with his father, far from any distractions, far from the people, because he needs to mourn and law his loss. He needs to grieve the loss of his cousin. Romans 9.26 says, The Spirit helps us in our weakness. Jesus surely had to feel weak in that moment. It goes on and says, We do not know what to pray for, but the Spirit intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. We can only imagine the groaning and the grief Jesus had in his mind, in his heart, in his body as he mourned the loss of his brother in Christ. In the movie Shadowlands, about the life of C.S. Lewis, we learn of his strong relationship with his wife, Joy. Joy was diagnosed with cancer after the two were married. The movie invites us to witness love, to witness pain, joy, grief, struggles with the disease and with their faith. And I imagine Jesus experienced all these same feelings at the loss of John. Towards the end of the movie, a friend says to C.S. Lewis, I know how hard you've been praying, and now God is answering your prayers. And C.S. replied, that's not why I pray, Harry. I pray because I can't help myself. I pray because I am helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me at all times, waking, sleeping. It doesn't change God. It changes me. Jesus needed change from the pain he was feeling. And so off he goes to that hillside. And there was nothing he could do but pray to his father to get through that time. Time away without crowds did not last long, however. They followed him. He wasn't left alone to pray. The people followed and followed, thousands of them, right? Demanding his time and presence. Now, like Jesus, I was away for two and a half days in solace and quiet, trying to find my connection with God. And before I even seemed to settle into that rhythm of connection, like Jesus, I found myself back home again in the swing and fast pace of life. Oh, got worship to do tomorrow. I've got to get ready. No time to process. And so compassionate Jesus, who's always filled with love and care for his people, leaves his own needs behind and begins to speak to them and heal them. Author Scott Higgins tells a story of watching a spider. How many of us have watched spiders just weave their, yeah, weave their web, right? This gentleman marvels at the spider's patience. The long, laborious process of spinning every single night, waiting each night for the reward of a fly. The spider needs to be patient, patient enough to build and rebuild, build and rebuild over and over and over again, and patient enough to wait for his prey. Scott says, the spider reminds me that there are things in life which I need to learn patience, that there are things that need to be built slowly and carefully if I am to find the reward life has to offer. The web I weave is one of relationships with the people I love and the people who can be quite prickly. It's a web of daily chores required to keep a house functioning and routines that must be followed. At times, I find myself growing impatient, wishing I could fast track to all these processes or even eliminate them altogether, but they are the web of life. And if I am to reap life's rewards, then surely I must find the patience to build that web. 
Now, even though Jesus had his own needs at the time, it was his patience and his desire to heal and share that allowed him to weave a web of new believers on that hillside. And it's a lesson for all of us to be patient with ourselves, be patient with one another, as we help each other weave faith into our lives and daily living. Now, there were thousands on that hillside that day. Scripture said 5,000 men, and that didn't count the women and the children. Imagine the people milling about all day long, just waiting in anticipation for something new to be woven into their hearts. They were waiting for the healing words of the master. When will he speak? What's he going to say? Do you think he'll talk to me? Am I going to be the one that he heals today? They were so intent on receiving his blessing that they were willing to withstand the blistering hot sun beating down on them hour after hour. They stayed so long the sun went down, even when their bellies must have been grumbling and rumbling from hunger. On the last day of my treat, there was still much to be taught much to share and much to learn, and I stayed it out right until the very end, despite the four-and-a-half-hour trip home. And I tell you what, I had a gnawing, growling stomach that knew that lunch had long since passed, and it began to growl loudly, and I was praying that nobody else was hearing it. I imagine quite similar to the bellies of the people on the hillside that were hungry. I, I found myself not being able to concentrate. What did he just say? Oh, I've got to remember that. It just went on and on. And then I began wondering, um, when am I going to be able to stop on the drive home to eat? I've got to get food. I'm not going to make it home. We know the disciples wanted the people to fend for themselves. And I thought, they want me to fend for my food. They have no desire to take on that task of finding food for me. Did the disciples? No, they didn't want to take on that task either for all those thousands. And like the people in today's story, I did hang in there. I hung in there until the last session was over. And as I was heading out the door, they handed me a lunch bag. Oh, thank you, Jesus. A lunch bag. Wasn't fish and loaves, but it was a great turkey sandwich. And it got me home. It got me going. Was it worth it to stay that last? Absolutely. Absolutely. I needed to hear everything that they had to say. The people on the hillside needed to hear everything that Jesus was saying. And how did they get fed? Jesus said, bring them here. We'll feed them. I can imagine what the disciples must have thought, really. But they did as they were told. They did as they were told. And in the end, all they had were five loaves and two fishes. But what happened at the end of the day? There were 12 baskets left over of scraps. That's how much Jesus can feed us. So full that we will have leftovers. And those leftovers, what do we usually do with them? We eat them again, right? And again. And then when we get sick of them, we run the dish over to the neighbors, right? We share it. The people never gave up on Jesus that day. The disciples didn't give up. Why? Because they believed in Jesus. Now, there's days in our lives where we might want to give up, right? We might have physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain. We may be hungry for all those things as well. Days when we experience the chaos of the world, forcing us to leave our quiet, sacred moments. 
Days when we're hot, and we've been hot this summer. Days when we're hungry, and then we turn to the wrong things, like sweets, when we should be eating protein, and we try to feed our hunger, but it never satisfies. Days when we question ourselves as to how we're going to be fed physically and spiritually. And even days when we question the power of God. Is God going to perform a miracle for me today? When these times come, the fishes and loaves story isn't always my first thought, I have to admit. I have a tendency to think back to my childhood, where there was chaos a lot, and it would rain in our home, where I hungered, not for food, but I hungered for love. I hungered on the days I felt empty for something or someone to make it better. And I can remember, unbeknownst to me at the time, Jesus was on the hillside waiting for me. Years Jesus waited for me to come to the hillside. So when I think of chaos, I think of my early years. I think of my two sisters. I consider us like three peas in a pod. Even though the saying goes, two peas in a pod. There's three of us at home, so we were three peas, and I've got three peas in a pod right there on the communion table. We were in that home life together, and we were all in the same pod, experiencing similar things. All the people on the hillside were with Jesus. They were all different. My sisters and I were different, but we all experienced the same thing. And we hung in together, just as the people hung in on the hillside that day. They were hungry for food and the word of God. And Jesus did not disappoint. They were filled both bread and fish and spiritual food. So when tough times come, and I want to get close to Jesus, I can't help but think of pea pods. Yes, pea pods. Pea pods. They're good for you. They're yummy. And those little peas are delicately placed inside the shell of Christ, holding us together. Not letting us go until we split ourselves. And you know, being a pea in a pod, I get to understand what connects myself to Christ. It connects me to prayer. That little piece that hangs down that holds the pea. Ah, oh, that's the spirit of Christ just holding on, saying, don't don't worry, little one. Don't worry, little one. I'll feed you. I'll care for you. I'll care for you. And so I think of Jesus caring for me, and I often think of it when I'm in prayer. Right? I'm praying to Jesus. Jesus is praying for me. The people on the hillside, they were there for healing. And Jesus was healing them. I also think of perseverance as one of my little peas. I've got to wait until Jesus makes Jesus' self known to me. I've got to persevere, hanging in that pod, until Jesus has a word for me that I cannot deny. And then the third P of my metaphor uh, the pod of life, if you will, would be patience. I t have a tendency to want answers right now, perhaps even yesterday. I desire miraculous events like fishes and loaves, and sometimes God has provided them. More often, they're small miracles. I often wonder if those on the hillside were impatient for that food they hungered for, like when I feel impatient. Perseverance, prayer, patience. It has become very apparent 
We can live on all the foods that are available to us in our everyday life, but they're not going to nourish us spiritually. Unlike dining on metaphorical pea pods. Physical food won't bring a spring to our step or compassion in our heart. It won't keep us from being ugly or gossipy. It won't help us stay away from sin. It won't keep us centered in loving the people we have become. It won't help us to dance with the wildflowers or sing in the rain. It won't let us see Jesus. So we got to go to that hillside to see Jesus. And we have a choice to make. We can choose to let the chaos of our lives demand our time and energy rather than sitting on that hillside patiently waiting for a healing or a word. We can let other issues of our lives distract us from quiet prayer time, or we can hang in the pod with our siblings, our other peas, persevering, until Christ comes and anoints us and opens up our beauty and heals us to the world. To God be the glory. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in the response to the word in this poem titled Food for Soul. Together? When day turns night, setting of sun, hunger looms large, everyone. Waiting in stillness, prayerful heart, long true food the Lord imparts. Stretch palm lifted, full to brim, enough for all, though day draws dim. Not fish, not loaf, not food of any kind, food for the heart, food for the mind. And now let us sing together, Jesus, we are here, 2273 in the small black faith we sing, or up on the screen. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. We are here for you, Savior. We are here, Savior. We are here, Savior. We It's at this time we take a moment of reflection in regard to the gifts God gives us and the gifts we give in return. We have offering plates at both entrances to the sanctuary, or you can go up online, umcburlington.com, and offer a gift there. And it is because of yours and our ancestors' gifts that we are able to continue our ministry here in Burlington. And what a ministry it has been as we continue our celebration of two 
200 years of being in ministry in Burlington. Can we say 200 years? Let's say it again. 200 years. Hallelujah. Amen. And next week is the big week. We've got the bishop coming, the DS coming. We have um, a past pastor and perhaps a few others that will be coming. We, this sanctuary will be filled full of beautiful music. We have a cellist and a, um, uh, Tom, what do you call yourself, a hornist? <laughs> Baritone horn, we've got the piano, we've got um, singers coming, we have food and a band outside on the lawn. You will not want to miss next Sunday, because that will be your celebration for all the work and the commitment and dedication you have had to this temple. I applaud you for keeping it going, for keeping your hearts open and your minds open to the possibilities that God is giving you and has given you and will give you as we move into the future together. And so now, in gratitude for all that we have received from God, we offer our tithes and our gifts for the ministry in, of this church in the world, which hungers and thirsts for a peapod. Together, let us pray the doxology. With great joy, we present these tithes and gifts for the ministry of this church. Be with each of us as we too commit ourselves to lives of joyful, thankful service. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I invite you to be in a spirit and a relaxed posture of prayer as we pray for our needs, our joys, and concerns near and far. Lord, we lift up to you our congregation as we continue to celebrate our 200 years. We pray for safe travel for our bishop and Reverend Mary next week as they come to share the message of hope with us. We pray for a wonderful turnout for this celebration, as well as for the ice cream social on Friday and quad bike rides this coming weekend. We pray for those who are struggling to find their call in their lives. We pray for those who feel lost and alone. We pray for those who have health issues, especially Julia, who has contracted COVID for a third time. We continue to pray for Tom and Harry's health, that healing might come soon. We pray for others who are ill but are not with us this day. You, God, know who they are. We pray that you will help heal them or get them to the place that they need to be healed. We grieve, O oh Lord, at the violence of our world, right in our own corners of paradise, with shootings in St. Johnsbury, Danville, and Burlington just over the past weekend. Lord God, that is the chaos. That is where we need you. We continue to lift up Montpelier and Waterbury, the flood victims, and now we add Middlebury and their flash flooding to our ever-growing prayer concerns. We offer space and solitude now to lift up any private prayers that are in our hearts. And now, with the confidence of children, we pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to turn to page seven in your hymnals, your red hymnals, or you can um, participate in our communion service on the screen. Ours is an open table. That means everybody comes, especially today when Christ offers us this food for our souls. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup.
gave thanks to the Father and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you gather in my name, drink of this cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many partake and share in the one. The bread in which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. I invite the communion stewards to come forward. Let's lift him up. Come, come. The meal has been prepared. Come with joy. And Thanksgiving, come.
body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Do we have any folks on Zoom? I have no picture of who is on Zoom this morning. And so, ah, here we go. Here we go. Priscilla and Jim the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Lindsay, Mary, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Mary and Kitties, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Megan, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Sue, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and Pat, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. May you be filled. Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the closing prayer, Lord God, you have fed us in word, word and, and bread. bread. We, we feel whole and filled. Your word is within, and we shall take it with us as we leave this hillside. Help, Help us to, to proclaim it, it in, in the, the week ahead. We head. Amen. Amen. Please join us in the closing hymn on the board or page 672 in the red hymnal. God be with you till we meet again.
Jesus' feet. Do we need, do we need, God be with you to meet again. God be with you to we meet again. When life's perils they confound you, put his arms unfailing round you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Go in peace, knowing that God will always be by your side in all that you do. Go in love, offering healing and hope to others. Go in joy, that others may be lifted and inspired in service. Until we meet again. Amen. Oh, YouTube, Robert, bless you. <laughs>